Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and over the past couple of weeks, there's been some major app updates. So I wanted to go over those and then also talk about when to expect the next versions of iOS. Now, the first thing is yesterday, Apple announced the Apple card update. We saw this in iOS 15.5 code and we just never saw it actually show up. And if we go into the wallet app, you'll see that there's an Apple account card. Now, now this account card can be used with your iTunes balance to pay maybe in an Apple store. So you can use this just like you would with your wallet to tap to pay. And you can load this up like you would normally, you'll see, it says ready to use pay with your iPhone in an Apple store shop online or buy apps, subscriptions, and other services. So instead of using a credit card, you can load this up with gift card balances. It's the same thing as what you had before with an iTunes card, but now it's here. So you can just add that within the wallet app, press the little plus in the upper right. We'll go back. And with the plus in the upper right, it'll be under previous cards. If you already have it set up or you'll have it here available as a new card to add, then you can just add it and it will show up with your account balance. So that's something they updated yesterday that's available now. And I've had people around the world tell me that it's available. So some people have said it's not in their area yet, such as the UK, but others from places such as Saudi Arabia have told me it's available also. So it doesn't seem to be region specific for some people. It seems to be rolling out now. Others it's showing up a little bit later with Apple's worldwide developer conference swiftly approaching, they've updated the developer app. The developer app was updated today and allows you to explore all WWDC 2022 has to offer, including session videos, digital lounges, one-on-one -on -one labs, coding and design challenges, and more. So you can actually go in here and see all about WWDC. It will have the schedule when you can watch it and much more. So you'll have everything from the Apple keynote. You'll see June 6th, then the platform state of the union at 1 PM Pacific specific time after the keynote labs and more. So as Apple is actually presenting this information, this will be updated where you can go in and view it all yourself. So I would highly recommend you download the developer app. If you want all the information, not just what they have in the keynote. Now, along with this, every time they update these apps, they also push out different stickers. So if you go into the messages app, you can see new stickers that are from that developer app. So if you go into here and then go into your stickers down at the bottom, scroll all the way to the right, go to more under more. You'll see that if we scroll down, we have developer. So if you have the developer app installed, you can see that here. And now we have a bunch of new stickers. So we have a bunch for WWDC and different emojis or, or an emojis or emojis here with gears turning birds around your head. And then also things such as WWDC 2022, as you can see here. So you can send those stickers, use any one of those, and you'll see all of them available. So if you install the app, you can see all those stickers now and then use them and send them along. So those are all available. Now, for those of you that don't use Google maps or Apple maps, Apple is actually, or Waze has actually updated the Waze app. So if you go into Waze, so within the Waze app, once you go into it and you're at your main location, you'll have a music icon in the upper right. It now supports Apple music. So it will see all of the different options within your phone, such as YouTube music, Spotify, audible, or Apple music. And that's been added to Waze. So you can now use that with Apple music while you're using Waze as well. So that's an update that came out the other day. Now, if you use WhatsApp as your messaging platform, or you just have it on your phone, they finally updated it to allow for those emoji reactions I mentioned a few weeks ago. So you now have those features that they said were going to be coming soon. They're now available. So you have access to them. And then also if you're using WhatsApp on an older device, they've said that in the future, they're no longer going to be supporting iOS 10 or iOS 11. So if you have a device that has one of the older versions of iOS on it, 10 or 11, you'll either need to upgrade to iOS 12 or newer or get a newer device. So that's something that may be a bit unfortunate if you're using an older iPhone, but just wanted to make you aware of that. Now, if you're on Reddit at any amount of time, you probably have already heard of the Apollo app. Apollo is a great third party app for following along on Reddit, and they've had a major update in May. As you can see here, it says today's update to Apollo. Apollo is a crazy one with completely revamped custom notifications, brand new, gorgeous icons, and a slew of other handy features and bug fixes read on. So you've got different notifications. As we scroll down, you'll see, we've got some new icons you can change to and even more. So you can see tons of other improvements. So things such as a new video deblurinator feature that helps with the improved or improving the quality of Reddit video playback or added the option to hide media controls by default when opening the media viewer. So they've completely updated this with a huge update. And if you use Apollo, this is a big update and worth updating to. 
Now, also, Instagram got an update this past week, and some people haven't been too happy about it. They've updated this icon, so it's a little bit more vibrant and bright, and that's not too much of an issue for a lot of people, but it just seems to have a lot of ads in it and more. Now, they updated it with visual refreshes, brighter icons, and new typography. So if we go into it, here's my profile on Instagram, and you can see it here. So I have a bunch of things, mostly about when iOS updates come out, and they've just given it a refresh here and there. So if you're using Instagram, you may have already seen the update, but quite a few people have been having some bugs with it as well, and even problems today communicating with it. So that's been updated, but there's additional things that they've fixed here as well, but hopefully they'll have another update soon addressing many people's concerns. Now there's an app I actually shared in my what's on my iPhone video that I thought many would enjoy called Plane Finder. It helps you see nearby planes, and they've actually updated this with better sorting. So if we go to Plane Finder, Finder here. There it is. Plane Finder shows all of the local air traffic or anything around in real time. And like I've said, I'm pretty surprised it's actually legal to see all of this. But now under filters, you can sort by military planes as well. So custom filters here, and you have to have premium to do this, but you can actually sort by military plane, regular plane. Of course, if it's a military operation, it's not going to show you that, but it will show different aircraft throughout the air in real time. You can actually sit at an observation area at the Charlotte Airport and see planes as they're landing in real time with their actual information changing and their altitude. And as they're landing, it shows them they're sending and shows everything about them. So it's an app I really appreciate, especially if you're tracking someone that's coming to visit you or maybe a loved one that's going to fly somewhere else. You can see that in real time where they are, what altitude they're at, and what speed they're at. So that's been updated with a higher focus just for military aircraft and sorting ability. Now with WWDC 2022 quickly approaching, there's an app I would recommend if you're excited about it called iEvent Timer. Now this is a paid app and if you go into it, it will actually tell you time until the next Apple event. So right now it's 10 days, 22 hours, nine minutes and eight seconds. So you can download this app and as the next event is actually announced, it'll switch to that and then give you a countdown. It'll actually notify you as well on your iPhone and Apple Watch. You'll get a notification that, oh, we're only nine days out or eight days out, and then it will let you know. So if you want to keep track of that, that's a great way to keep track of it. And I'll link it in the description. So I'll link all of the apps if you're not familiar with them and they're not Apple apps. Now, at the time of this video, many of us expected iOS 15.5.1 to be released already. And the reason I say that is yesterday, Apple released tvOS 15.5.1 and HomePod OS 15.5.1 or audio OS 15.5.1. And that was to address an issue where the music would stop playing. You can see that in your home app. If you go here and it's not updated already, you'll see a little update option, and then it will update your home pod to no longer have it skip music. So that's something they pushed out yesterday. And usually when they push out those updates, they'll push out an iOS update as well, but they haven't done that yet. So we're expecting that as soon as either later today or possibly the next few days, it's very unusual for them to do that but it's possible we could see an odd Friday release, or maybe we won't see one at all, but it seems very likely that we'll have that. And then next week, around next Tuesday or Wednesday, the 30th or 31st, or maybe even June 1st, I would expect iOS 15.6 beta 2. Of course, the big update will be on June 6th at WWDC with iOS 16 beta 1 to developers, and then a public release probably a month or so later in July at some point. That's typically what they do, and it could be a little bit later than that this year from what people are saying. So all of those updates are expected soon. I'm hoping we have 15.5.1 soon to fix some issues that we're having with 15.5, but either way, I'll keep you updated if we do. Swift Playgrounds got updated this past week to version 4.1. Swift Playgrounds is Apple's app to teach coding, and also you can create an app right within Swift and then push it to the App Store. So that's something you can do here, and they updated it on the iPad with some major updates, but even bigger updates on the Mac. But on the iPad, you'll see it says Keep Going with Apps, helps you understand how data moves through Swift UI apps. Animating Shapes teaches you how to create, modify, and animate shapes. Capturing Photos is an advanced look at creating your own camera. So you've got the version history here, and there's even more on the Mac where they've updated it quite a bit. So on the Mac side, we have the ability now to build Mac apps with Swift UI. You'll need to have Mac OS 12.4 or later, but you can do that in Swift UI or Swift Playgrounds now directly on the Mac instead of using Xcode. So that's a possibility. You also have guided walkthroughs to teach Swift UI app building basics, app previews, 
apps built with Swift Playground can run and install to application folders and much more. So this was a major update to Swift and it's something you can completely use on the Mac instead of maybe using Xcode if you're not familiar with it. So maybe you're coming from an iPad to a Mac, this would be a great transition. Apple also updated Final Cut Pro. This is a bug that we were having with it where they updated it to 10.6.3 to fix a bug with transitions. So it improves reliability when dragging and dropping to replace a transition. It improves reliability when dragging a transition onto a connected clip. And I've found this was a problem when you were copying and pasting maybe one complete project to another project that where you want to try something different, it would really change how the transitions worked and their duration and length. So that's something they've resolved. They've also fixed an issue where custom sound effects do not always appear in the sound effects browser. So those three things have been improved with Final Cut Pro. And I know a lot of people welcome that. Now my favorite photo editing app for maybe creating thumbnails and more for my videos is Pixelmator Pro. They've again updated it to version 2.4.3 and introduced an all new photo browser, which adds a few handy workflow improvements and fixes according to them. So the photo browser has been redesigned from the ground up and it improves support for iCloud photos and smoother photo browsing overall. So that's the major update with Pixelmator. So a lot of things as far as that goes. And of course there's minor fixes here and there, but I wanted to share the ones that got the larger updates. And so that's everything with the app updates this past week. Of course, many of us are excited for the next version of iOS and to see just what WWDC will bring us with iOS 16, iPadOS 16, watchOS 9, macOS 13, which is rumored to be called Mammoth, and maybe even Reality OS that shows with a VR headset or AR headset. I'm looking forward to all of those things and we're only about a week and a half away. Let me know what you're most excited about in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.